Our lives are so full of movement, technology, distractions, worries, tasks to accomplish. We're pulled in every direction from the time we get up until the time we go to bed. I see people going like this. And for many of us, we're still being pulled by life when we're trying to rest. How many of us are not sleeping at night? Multitasking has become a thing to do. Televisions and music blare in the background as we have dinner. Cell phones interrupt conversations. To-do lists become page after page long. And then when we go to bed, our minds won't stop. Life for many of us has become an unending cycle of tasks, stress and exhaustion, exhaustion and stress. These things are affecting us. In our reading today, Jesus was having one of those days, or maybe one of those weeks. In the passage prior to today's passage, Jesus had called Simon and Andrew from their fishing boats and told them he would make them fishers of men. Then he traveled to Capernaum and taught in the temple. And while he was there, he drove out some unclean spirits from a man. Then they left there, and that's where today's reading picks up. Jesus goes to Simon and Andrew's house along with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law was ill, and when Jesus learned of this, he took her by the hand, lifted her up, and made her well. Word must have traveled just as fast then as it does on Facebook today, because by nightfall, the entire city was outside of the door. And that night he cured many people. Talk about multitasking, gathering disciples, traveling, teaching, healing. Surely he had to be exhausted, physically, mentally, spiritually exhausted. Back to our lives. We find ourselves exhausted and overwhelmed by our multitasking, our technology, and our many meetings. And what have we started doing? Classrooms have timeout chairs and quiet spots who kid, for kids who need a break. Curriculums are beginning to teach kids to calm themselves, to meditate and be quiet. At the same time, we see an increase in people going for weekly massages, if they can afford it, signing up for yoga class, learning to meditate. Self-help books teach us how to unplug and quiet ourselves. And at the same time, we also see a use in alcohol and drugs and addiction. People are trying to find a way, any way they can, to tune out the madness of the world. We are in danger of a short circuit, a meltdown, a breakdown, or pure exhaustion. Back to Jesus. He had the best answer of them all. What did he do? Flo, say it out loud. Pray. He prayed. Our reading tells us it is so simple we could almost miss it. Let me read it again. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and then he prayed. Aha! He prayed. He took a quiet moment to sit with our Father, to contemplate his work, ask for guidance, reflect, and be still. A simple answer. Jesus re-energized himself with prayer. He unplugged from the world and plugged into the energy that only God can provide. And when his followers found him, he was ready to go. He said, let's go to the neighboring town so that I may proclaim the message there. For that is what I came to do. The answer is simple, prayer. Jesus knew it. Jesus prayed. In fact, he was continually in prayer mode. If you look in the Bible, we can find many instances. He prayed alone, in public, before meals, before important decisions, before healings, after healings, at his, baptiz at his baptism, before he chose the 12 disciples, while speaking to the Jewish leaders, he prayed to give thanks when he fed the 5,000, 
before he walked on water, before he taught the disciples how to pray, before he raised Lazarus from the dead, he prayed with the children at the Lord's Supper, in Gethsemane before his betrayal, on the cross, and in his dying breath, and with the disciples before the ascension. And that's not all the times he prayed. He knew the power of a strong prayer life with God. Now Jesus knew it, and guess what? Today's scientific community has now verified it. A recent study at Baylor University found that people who believe in a loving God and have a deep relationship with God are less likely to experience anxiety-related disorders than the people who pray but don't really expect to receive any comfort. That's interesting. The same study found that people who went about praying but did not believe that God is really there for them were the folks who started to feel rejection and would start to talk about unanswered prayers, often leading to symptoms of anxiety and discomfort. Interesting, isn't it? I'm guessing that Jesus falls into the people who know a loving and comforting God and have a strong relationship with God category. Where do we fall? People all often discuss the best way to pray. Three preachers were discussing the best position to assume when in prayer as they sat outside on a park bench. A telephone repairman was working nearby. The first preacher said that kneeling was definitely the best position for prayer. The second preacher said the best results came when he stood with his hands outstretched toward heaven and prayed. And the last preacher said, you're both wrong. The most effective prayer position is to lie face down on the ground and pray. The telephone repairman had been listening and he couldn't contain himself any longer. Yelling down from his perch, he said, the best praying I ever did was hanging upside down from a telephone pole. How one positions oneself to pray does not matter. Praying matters. Need a drink. And many people discuss what it is we should be asking for when we pray. Little kids often have the most interesting requests in prayer. A mom sent her misbehaving son to his room to think about what he had done. <laughs> After a while, he emerged from the room and informed his mom he had thought about it and he had said a prayer. His mom was proud of him and said, that's good. If you ask God to help you not to misbehave, he will help you. Oh, mom, said the little boy, I didn't ask him to help me not to misbehave. I asked him to help you put up with me. <laughs> Given the same situation, different people will pray for different things. But we should be praying for God's answer. His will be done. In today's passage, we are not told about a position for prayer or what to pray for or any of the questions about prayer that may come to our minds. We are just told he got up early in the morning, went to a deserted place, and prayed. The important yet very simple point in this story is to find time to converse with God. If Jesus needed to do this, and he's closer to God than anyone I know, then shouldn't we pray in order to sustain and grow our relationship with God? Back to human relationships for a moment. Consider trying to build a new friendship or a relationship. We put time into those. Conversations matter. Spending time together matters. How often have one of our human relationships ended because one party or another stopped the effort, stopped communicating, stopped making time for the other? Losing touch often ends a relationship. Our relationship with God needs to be nurtured with prayer and spending time with him as well. And guess what? God is not the one who lets the relationship slide. It's usually us. Jesus had an intimate relationship with God, one in which he knew God would listen to prayer, 
one in which he knew God was in control, and one in which he believed. If Jesus, who was the closest to God, needed time to talk to God, then we most definitely need it. We need prayer time to grow closer to God and to other believers. We don't know what Jesus and God talked about on this particular day, but he started his day in prayer. The following prayer has been making the rounds on social media lately. I bet a lot of us can relate. Dear God, so far today, I've done all right. I haven't gossiped or lost my temper. I haven't been grumpy or greedy, nasty or selfish. I'm really glad about that. But in a moment, God, I'm going to get out of bed. So I am really going to need a lot more help from you. Who knows if Jesus, who was both human and divine, might also have said such words. I am guessing that while Jesus was having one of those days, when the world was grabbing at him and expecting miracles, and when he could get no rest, Jesus probably did not worry about having one of those days because he felt refreshed and invigorated by the Father. I bet Jesus was seeking to be energized and seeking guidance on how to do his Father's work. Growing up in the Jewish faith, Jesus learned the Psalms. He probably memorized many of them, just like most of us know the 23rd Psalm. The Psalms are songs or prayers to God. Does anybody remember in January, Pastor Matt challenged us to read the Psalms? Anyone who has started to do this can easily see how reading or perhaps memorizing these would be a great way to start or end, end one's day. Psalm 141 was another choice for today's reading. Take a minute and listen to it. It'd be good if my Bible weren't upside down. I could read better this way. Psalm 141. I call upon you, O Lord, come quickly to me. Give ear to my voice when I call to you. Let my prayer be counted as incense before you, and let the lifting up of my hands as an evening sacrifice. Set a guard over my mouth, O Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not turn my heart to any evil, to busy myself with wicked deeds in company with those who work iniquity. Do not let me eat of their delicacies. Let the righteous strike me, let the faithful correct me. Never let the oil of the wicked anoint my head, for my prayer is continually against their wicked deeds. When they are given over to those who shall condemn them, then they shall learn that my words were pleasant. Like a rock that one breaks apart and shatters on the land, so shall their bones be strewn at the mouth of, of Sheol. But my eyes are turned toward you, O God, O O oh God, my Lord, in you I seek my refuge. Do not leave me defenseless. Keep me from the trap that they have laid for me and from the snares of evildoers. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I alone escape. That's just one example of a prayer in Psalms. I think it would be a great way to start or end one's day. In the passage we read, Jesus goes to a deserted place, a very quiet and secluded place. In our opening song today, we sang, I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the son of God discloses. I call the garden my happy place. That is where I'm most likely to spend time in prayer. I have a friend who walks and talks with God. She prays during her daily three-mile walk that she takes. No one can interrupt her there because she's a moving target then. I figure once I get myself up to those 10,000 goal steps and I stop looking at the pedometer every few minutes, I might be able to try to talk to God while I walk at the same time too. No matter how hard you try to find a good praying spot, 
And no matter how much we get away from the world, there are sure to be interruptions. Even Jesus was interrupted when he was praying in our passage today. And what did he do? He did not admonish or discipline the disciples. Instead, he said, okay, then let's go. He knew his purpose and he wanted to fulfill it. Like Jesus, we need to be cautious and to protect our prayer time. But like him, we must also remember that when God calls us, we need to say, okay, let's go, let's fulfill the mission. And knowing that we have spent time with God, we, like Jesus, can be re-energized and ready for that mission. As I was preparing for the sermon today, actually over the past few weeks I was working on it, a song from my days as a teenager came, kept coming to mind. How many of you remember the, the musical Godspell? Come on, there's more people my age out there than three or four. Okay, there's a song in it called Day by Day. The words for this song will be on the screen at the end of our service today. If we take time to devote time out from the world and spend time with God, then I believe the words of that song will come to us. As we leave this place, we will be praying to God day by day for three things, to see him more clearly, love him more dearly, and follow him more nearly day by day. Prayers will get us there. Amen.